All right, hey everybody. Uh, this is gonna be somewhat of a lazy video. I'm not gonna edit this. It's just gonna be me talking to the camera. It's unscripted as well. Uh, reason being, I kind of had to have to take off of a couple of days from work. Uh, my arms have been hurting like crazy. I'm not sure what's up. Maybe some sort of carpal tunnel or something. So I'm taking it easy for a couple of days. That's the reason why this video is not edited. Uh, but I was just bored because I couldn't really use the computer or play games or whatever because I'm trying to rest my arms. Um, so I figured I'd just do a video like this. I kind of thought this would be make an interesting video, but again, it's not going to be edited. It's not scripted. It's just me rambling to the camera and perhaps it's interesting and maybe it's not but i guess you'll let me know in the comments but i wanted to talk a little bit about uh houdini 18 um i mean i guess a lot of you have oh, i'm gonna just do it like this because I, I actually it's, it's annoying to listen to myself when i have to think on. all right um so yeah i mean last week was the uh, unveiling of houdini 18.5 and uh, i think it's really cool I've, I've been in the beta for for a while so i already tried out a lot of the stuff so still some of the stuff was really new because uh, i honestly didn't have time to try out all of the features yet and i was initially intending to try to do a tutorial on some of the new features before like on launch day but um haven't been able to well <laughs> to do that because of the the arms hey hooray um but i wanted to give my thoughts on houdini 18 because i i've seen some mixed opinions and i just wanted to give put my thoughts out uh because what i noticed is that um some of the more hardcore uh houdini users that have been using houdini for a long time have been a little bit negative on it uh while other people have been super positive and i wanted just wanted to share my thoughts on that um, on that part of it because the criticism and also of course i'm gonna give my own opinion but uh so the criticism from some of the more i guess like senior users the guys who've been using it since forever their criticism is that a lot of the new tools are, is not stuff that you couldn't do before it's essentially just packaging up uh existing soft tools fob tools uh vec stuff and make it into an easy to use um new node for example the pyro tools that's like how that i mean last edition they introduced the um the sparse solver and the sparse will have ha, sparse solver has been updated and stuff uh, but all of the new tools to sort of drive your pyro look based on um yeah based on like the uh uh the just like which just soft tools so just easy manipulation like you could have you could already do that stuff and i understand where they're coming from i mean everybody like they're all like well, you were already doing that but i like my, my opinion on the fact is that i'm actually super happy that they're doing all of that stuff even though i could have like i could already do all that things and make it myself but the problem with that is like a lot of studios have their in-house tools to do all of these things and yeah they have their own custom solvers but having these tools out of the box and just easy to easy to use uh, it's just super convenient for everybody getting into Houdini. Just like if you if you're completely new to Houdini and you want to do cool pyro explosions, yeah, sure you could already do it. Like you need to know um, uh, like VOPs and you need to know how to make custom velocity fields and how to how to do all of that stuff. But right now this just makes it super easy. Um, and I mean they have new shelf tools laying out some of the stuff, so it also just makes it it just makes it easier to get started and. I personally think this is this is a good direction, and it's not like Udini 18 doesn't have any new uh, any new core stuff. I'll get I'll get more on that later, but just having having these new sort of easy to use tools makes it makes people more likely to just try Udini because as you all know, like Houdini really has this um, this vibe of being hard to learn, and that's something I try to cover also with my Houdini 101 to sort of teach you the fundamentals, and that's like you can you can actually learn it as a beginner uh, which hopefully <laughs> sort of succeeded but i got a good response on how dini 101 so i guess that sort of uh, uh well that i guess people do, do like that message but and i think the direction that side effects is taking with with these tools is is quite nice of course we still also need core development but um the more people that can start using Houdini, that's also going to make a bigger market for side effects, like to, to eventually is expand on more core tools. Like if more people are starting to use Houdini, I mean, it's also going to bring in more money for them. So it'll end up 
making them more money so that and they can use that money to put into the core tools and it will just speed up Houdini uh, development even more so I'm not sure why people are complaining about these these sort of quality of life improvements and it's not like uh, Houdini 18.5 doesn't have any core tools I mean uh, Kina effects like the the new rigging stuff uh, and I'm I cannot really put video on top of it normally I would have intercut this with videos like stuff but you can watch the launch event but again like my arms are hurting so i'm not gonna do any editing it's just gonna be rambling to the to the to the camera but um yeah i mean the like kin effects um it's just is a very core thing that's something you couldn't do before um and they're gonna build upon that like and that's just how they're doing houdini envelopment in general they lay core concepts and they keep building on that and then you can take these core concepts and build your own tools. Um, and that, and I mean, those tools you can build yourself later, they they do that theirsel- themselves, they grab these tools and they package them themselves and then they make it easy to use. But they're still laying these groundwork. I mean, Python 3.7 is now in, in, uh, in Houdini uh, 18.5 and it was something that was requested for a long time and now Python 3 is there. So, or not, I'm not sure if it's 3.7, but at least Python 3 is in there. Um, so there's still all these all these new tools. Um, so and of course uh, Solaris has has gotten a big update. Um, and I mean in the last in the last version we got the updated Pyro Solver which they expanded upon. So that's also new. So it's not like there's no new stuff, but um, they've put a big emphasis on the easy to use tools. Also the um, the scatter and orient uh, swap. I hope I'm hope that's the correct name is new so uh, uh like stuff like that sure you could also do it yourself scatter points create uh, orientation but again like you know like doing uh like quaternions and stuff is a little bit complicated to a lot of new users so having this stuff built in from the get-go is just super useful and i know a lot of like senior houdini guys are really Like I want to do everything myself, but I mean, if it's there, why not use it? That's also what I'm seeing with like, for example, you have a lot of you might have heard about mops. If you haven't checked out mops, go to motionoperators.com. But um, yeah, that's from uh, from, uh, Henry Toadstorm and uh, and Mo from Antagma. They've developed that themselves. Um, And those are essentially pre-packaged uh tools that that he made from existing tools and they're super useful but i still see like some people just don't use them because they feel like it's cheating somewhat and this just doesn't make sense to me like in every other program if you use a program uh if you use a plugin you you're like well this is a great plugin i can do stuff more easy and in houdini everybody is like i just want to build it myself uh (laughs) Which is a little bit weird. I mean, I, I'm also guilty. Like sometimes I just build my own stuff because I just want to do it myself. But like Mops, for example, is like a good example. It uses all of the core tools, but it makes it just easier to use. Um, and it's also cool. Like Mops, I think is now on the official partner list from side effects, if I got correctly. Um, so, I mean, I I, I, just, I really applaud this. It's like, um, like, just Houdini has always been great because of the modularity. Like you can, it starts off with very low level tools and you build upon those low level tools and you package together these low level tools. And then people are now suddenly complaining that SideFX is packaging together these low level tools themselves to make it easier to use, which is weird to me because um, why not? Uh, I guess they're, yeah, they're sort of like, I'd rather have seen the development in like more core technology, but Again, if it makes it easier to use, more people will use Houdini and then we're all better off because I would l- really love to see a uh, just the CG industry go really hard on in, in on just Houdini use or Blender use, like a combination of the two. Um, just my, like the main thing I dislike always when I'm working with other studios, even bigger studios, is that they generally just have a Maya pipeline or whatever. And then all the stuff needs to go from Houdini to Maya and it's always super headache and it just stresses me out. Um, like if I wouldn't have to do that, if like the whole lighting pipeline is just inside of, of Houdini, uh, that would be great. And like with the new Kina effects, like the character stuff, like hopefully eventually that will get to a point where also maybe character animators would maybe think like, okay, I kind of prefer maybe doing character animation in Houdini because I have all of these other tools at my exposure that I wouldn't have 
inside of Maya. So maybe now Maya is just easier for the whole character development stuff, but yeah, uh, in the future, not, not, not really. And this new kin FX now is just the basics, but of course this is gonna be really expanded upon in the future. And I'm really excited to see where all of that is, is going. And I mean, sure, I also feel like sometimes when I see these new tools and then they made a, uh, uh, they, like they, they, they made something new and they were like, oh, but I already did that. For example, Houdini 18 introduced uh, emission of rigid body objects. And they, <laughs> they launched that like, uh, so Houdini 18 came out um, like two weeks after my um my my own tool uh, uh to to do that like i have my own hda to emit rich body objects um but and <laughs> and then udini 18 came out just after that i actually i i, I had um I, I heard about that even before launch when i mentioned it to some uh, to some people uh, and it was just really sad it was like oh, i've worked really hard on this tool and now now it's going to be in there but it's just that's just development man i mean uh, it's the same with like a lot of people were using grains before to do like soft bodies for example uh journey farmfield uh did a lot with grains to make soft bodies and that was super cool and then they introduced vellum and that kind of made all these techniques somewhat obsolete not necessarily because like all of this stuff still worked it was just easier and faster with within vellum but it doesn't necessarily mean that if it's just suddenly easier to use or faster that that i mean wh why would you be upset about something like that it's just better and it's easier to use for everybody so i mean in the end everybody is better off so i kind of get it but not completely so anyway that's kind of just the point that i wanted to to drive home i know it's just me rambling a little bit so hopefully it's it's interesting to still listen to but um yeah i just I think this is the right direction. I still, of course, want to see core development inside of uh, inside of Houdini, but these easy, the just these these quality of life adjustments and just making it easier for everybody to use is the main thing. I think that Sardivic needs to tackle, and I think that's what they're doing really well. Um, of course, for every TD or just like FX TD or uh, whatever. Uh, these things might be a little bit less interesting because they already know how to do all that stuff and might not be the most interesting update for them. But that's fine. I mean, um, like KinFX is a cool basic. They're all going to build upon that. I mean, the sparse uh, power solver is there. I mean, um, and yeah, they're just going to keep expanding upon that. And then something else, like um, I'm kind of thinking right now I'm on this train of thought. I was initially thought, thinking maybe I'm should round off this up, but I'm going to continue rambling for a little bit longer because it's me and I always ramble. Um, but yeah, um, kind of uh, like what they've also been doing just for the last couple, like uh, version, uh, Houdini versions, is just packaging stuff up inside of SOPs. And I don't like all of those tools. Like I don't like how they packaged up rigid bodies. For example, uh, because the fracturing tools for rigid bodies, like they have the, the RBD material fracture, which I should have, in my opinion, split up into multiple SOPs. Um, there's multiple people I've talked to that said that because the RBD material fracture is really slow because what it's doing is it has like a whole bunch of for each loops in it, which are compiled, but it's going to do a fracture and then another fracture and it's going to do detailing. It's going to do it all in one go. And what I would have liked to see, for example, for that is like base fracture, make another one for sub fractures, make another one for detailing. Uh, they have done it to some extent, but like not to the extent of like, cause the base thing is just slow. Uh, but the idea is good. Um, that's also what I've done with like, uh, like with, with, uh, with vellum vellum, you can use a lot of vellum just inside of SOPs. If you're gonna do more advanced stuff, you're gonna do it inside of, of DOPS, of course. But for example, you cannot really do proper grains with vellum in, in SOPS for some reason, because they didn't expose those controls. I'm not sure why. Um, but I do think this is the, the right way forward to just have this stuff inside of SOPS. Uh, and then if you wanna get more into it, if you do well, wanna develop your own tools, all of that stuff is there. The core tools are still being developed but it's also going to be easier for new users. And I think that's 
that's just really great. Uh, again, the more people coming to to Houdini, in my opinion, the better. Um, so yeah, I guess let's just leave it at that. Um, I hope you like my ramble thing. Sorry for this not being edited uh, uh, <laughs> or whatever, no stuff intercut, but um, I just wanted to record something. I just, I'm bored because I cannot, well, I can use my hands, but it hurts. So <laughs> I really hope that this is not gonna stay around for uh, much longer because it's just annoying. And I, I do have another course in, in, in the works that I'm, I'm recording stuff for now, which is really cool. Uh, so it is hopefully, uh, hopefully <laughs> once this is over, that should be, uh, should be up. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was interesting. And yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> okay, thanks guys, peace.